Greetings this amazing morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live on the scripture prescription. Praise the Lord and good morning wherever you're following us from. I'm excited to have this opportunity to speak into our lives. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you and we bless you this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the miracle that you came to die for us. We thank you, Father, for the grace that is available to us, O oh God. We honor you because of your power, because of your anointing, and because of your power. We lift up your name and we honor you, King of glory. So this morning, we appreciate your grace. We appreciate your power and your loving kindness. Have your way in our lives this morning and be lifted and honored in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to praise the Lord this morning because God is a good God. God has a good plan for us, and I want to speak about our subject, God knows you. In the words he says, I know you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now this word, God knowing us, does not begin at the time we are born God has known us from the beginning. God has known you even before you came on this earth. Why do I know this? I read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one and verse number five. Jeremiah, chapter number one and verse number five. I'm going to be reading from several translations just to put meaning into what I want to say. Good morning, Ismail. Great to see you this morning. Jeremiah chapter number one and verse number five. The Bible says from the New International Version, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. So God knew you before you were even born, even before you were formed in the womb of your parent, God knew you. Let's read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. One more version, and we will be done to hear the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Young's literal translation. Bible tells us, before I form thee in the belly, I have known thee, and before thou comest forth from the womb, I have separated thee, a prophet to the nations, I have made thee. Praise the Lord and good morning. Now, I want you to understand that many times we, that is why it is difficult to fight against somebody who God has ordained to do a particular task or ministry. You're wasting your time. Bible tells us, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now listen, our existence does not begin when we are conceived in the womb of our parents or when we are actually born physically into this world. Read. Listen, you see, when Jesus was born, an angel appears before Mary and says, that you're going to conceive a child of the Spirit of God, and in a due season, a child will be born, and you shall call him Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, look at the idea beyond all the, the, the coming of the child. So the idea of God bringing a son, Jesus Christ, does not begin at the very conception of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand. The idea, the discussion, the disposition... The, 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 the thought line of Jesus coming on this earth is before the conception of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that. 
Now, I also want you to know that when Jesus actually in the process of getting, uh, you know, going through the process of humankind of getting, you know, through the womb for nine months before they are born, you see the interaction between John the Baptist as a child and Jesus Christ as a child in both of them in the womb. There's a separation between them of three months, but they are able to acknowledge each other while they are still in the womb. So the, the, the idea of God is beyond your conception. Hallelujah. The idea of God about your life is actually earlier than the conception. I want you to understand, therefore, the Bible tells us before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God knows you before you are even conceived in the womb of your parent. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, that is why it is impossible to fight certain things in the lives of people. Because if these things are ordained by God before conception, how do you think you can fight them in the physical? It's not possible. If God has ordained a man that he will use in the end time plan, nothing you can do to stop the manifestation of this man in the kingdom. Nothing you can do. Because the idea is beyond the physical. The idea is beyond the natural. When the prophet is being talked about here, you know, as we have read it, we are, we, we are talking about something very interesting. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this statement actually is, as I've said before, is in considers the call of Jeremiah. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter number one and verse number five. So it's talking about the call of God upon prophet Jeremiah. And God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Now, there are people who think that you can set somebody apart in the physical. No, the process began before conception. If a man or woman is ordained to serve God, if a man or woman is ordained to do the work of God, they are ordained before they were formed in the womb of their parents. In other words, when God would use a man, when God would bless a man, this decision was made before conception. Now, what you are not party to before conception, how can you be party to after conception? I hope you're getting my point. Bible tells us, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. So, now, this is the truth of the matter. Do not worry, do not be frustrated, do not be discouraged by human appointments. Hallelujah. Do not be discouraged, do not be disturbed, do not be confused, do not be rattled by human appointments. Because the appointment in service to God originates from God and it's before conception. Now, Bible tells us somewhere else, for we are hidden in Christ, together with Christ in God. For we are hidden together with Christ in God, and we sit in the heavenly places. Now, if you fight anybody on the physical, a man or woman who sits in the heavenlies, don't you think you're wasting your time? Now, I want therefore to decree and declare to you, child of God, this morning, that what God's intention was in your life, whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, that call, that power, that anointing, that revelation was there before you were formed in the womb of your parent. God knew you. I've come therefore to submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you need not to worry you need not to be ashamed. You need not to be discouraged. You need not to give up. You must hold on because what God has laid in store for you was agreed, was discussed, was opinionated before conception. Hallelujah. And that is why it is impossible to pull down a man whose appointment is from God Almighty. 
You have an appointment from God. You have an appointment from God Almighty. You have an appointment from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that appointment can never be reversed. It can never be stopped. It can never be subverted because what you did not appoint, you cannot pull out. You see, right now in the country, we are preparing for elections uh, in the coming year, 2022. And because presidency or a president is appointed through a process. Now, that problem over point, that, that process of appointment, when the time of service is gone, then you are naturally recalled from your position. And that position is not entirely yours. It's the people who have donated their authority to appoint you as a president to run matters of state on their behalf. Now, when that time is gone, there's another opportunity for people to put another person into office of the president. So, by virtue of the people appointing somebody into presidency, they have the same power every five years to pull out people from that position of authority. But that is not with God. The appointment of God cannot be reversed by men. It cannot. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Listen, so when is the setting part done? Before formation. When did God know you? Before you were conceived. Did God, when did God set the prophet apart? Before they were conceived. When did God appoint the prophet to be a prophet? Before conception. So all these things do not happen because you're seeing. By the time you're seeing a man has got the vision. By the time you're seeing a man has the anointing. By the time you see a man can rightly divide the word of God in truth. By the word you see, oh, this man can serve in ministry. By the time you see, oh, this lady can serve in ministry. You're only confirming what was done before that person was formed at the place of conception. That discussion was with God many years ago. Oh, I hope you get this revelation. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Before you do all you do right now, there are things that God decided. He talked about, he knows them at the point before conception. God knew it. Now, our role, my role, is to be able to play what we call a midwife's role. That is my role. To ensure that the child is born safely and there is no interference, there is no challenge, that the child is born into the dream that God called. That is why Paul says, my little children, whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. My little children, whom I travail until Christ is formed in you. Listen to me and listen to me real good. God's intention on a man, whether woman or the male or female, God's intention is what he has purposed them to become. No man can stop that individual to be what God destined them to be. My humble role as a minister, my humble role as a preacher, my humble role as a mentor, my humble role as a man with responsibility to cause people to reach their destiny in time is to midwife the process, is to midwife the process. And so I humble myself before the mighty hand of God not to overlook, not to discourage, not to, you know, to treat badly, uh, not to cause people to lose the mark because I just don't know what God has called them to be because that which God has called them to be will come to pass. My job is to midwife the process, to help you, to help you be the very best that God intended you to be in time so that there'll be no delay 
that you will arrive at your destiny, at your place of functioning, at the right time that God desires for you. I hope that this message is loud and clear. God knows you. God says, I know you. And I do not know you today. I knew you before you were formed in the womb. I knew you. What a mystery. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes people are fighting things they know nothing about. Things you better be very careful what you fight tomorrow. Because you don't know. You just never know what God's intention on a man or woman is. You just never know. Don't fight the man. Don't fight the woman. Fight issues that are ungodly in the man or woman. Fight things that are not right in the man or woman. But don't, never fight the man or woman. Because God knew the man or woman before they were formed in the womb. God knew them. And because he knew them then, he set them apart. He said, this is the person I want to use in this dimension. This is the woman I want to use in this dimension. And then the Bible tells us, I have appointed you as a prophet. God has appointed you as a prophet in a specific sphere of operation. Understand where God has called you and pursue the dream and the call of God in your life. Wow, what an amazing, an amazing revelation this morning. And so I'm excited to know that that which God has called me to do can never be delayed by a man. It can never be delayed by human action, not at all. And if there's an attempt by human action, then God, who is the appointing authority, will deal with it. God bless you. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you have been uh, touched by the word of God. Allow me to make this announcement so that you can prepare. Hallelujah. We promise on this platform they're going to begin special uh, uh, special programs on Zoom, but we'll stream it live to Facebook. And it's going to be a, a program which we are calling Recabite Moments. I'll be going to talk to you in the short while what the Recabite Moment is all about. But Rechabites were special people in the Bible who said they would not do what their fathers did not tell them. They said they would not do things that their fathers told them not to do. And they were very specific. Even when they were served with alcohol, they said we will not do it because our fathers asked us not to do it. Those were the Rechabites in the Bible. So we are having what we are calling Rechabite Moments, a program sponsored by the TSP. The scriptural prescription, the scriptural prescription where we are going to be inviting specific individuals, men and women of God, who are going to be talking about specific things. One of these meetings is scheduled for next week. There's already a banner, there's already an announcement on this platform. We're going to have this first recabite moment uh, next week. And we believe on 9th of September, 8 p.m. on Zoom, but we will share it on this platform. We're going to have a special uh, special meeting where Reverend Samson Minor, a man of God I've known for many years, is going to be talking about uh, a, a, a topic about realities, or expectations versus realities in marriage. Expectations versus realities in marriage. This recabite moment, you'll never be the same again if you choose to, you know, join this meeting. So it's going to be on Zoom. The meeting ID has already been circulated and the passcode has already been circulated. Make sure on 9 Thursday, next Thursday, 9th, on 9th, 9th of September at exactly 8 p.m., you join up on the Zoom or you join up on this program Ah, you will never be the same again. This is the man of God I know. And I know he's going to be a blessing to you. There are many people who have got different conceptions about marriage. So we're going to be looking at 
expectations versus realities in marriage and the good lord will bless you invite uh, you know guys who want to get married invite those who are also married let them show up and i know that their lives will never be the same again the recabite moments are here we're going to be announcing how regular we're going to have them but they're in place we start the first recabite moment on 9th of september 8 p.m the zoom link is already there the meeting id and the passcode they already been created and circulated look for it put it in your calendar diarize and make sure you attend god bless you shall we pray father we bless you and we thank you thank you for your grace thank you for your power thank you for revelation may your name be glorified in jesus name we pray amen and amen this is your host pastor johnston sacco coming to you live on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.